Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set the return value in a combo box after using the list items edit form in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Willis in Juno Beach, Florida, one of my platinum members. Willis is on the other side of the state. I'm on the west coast of Florida, Fort Myers. Juno Beach is over on the east coast side. So we're kind of neighbors. And there's your Florida geography lesson for the day. <laughs> Anyways, Willis says, I love the video you did last week on the list items edit form. However, is there any way to get that new item you've just entered and set that value in the combo box you came from? As it is now, I have to type in a new value, close the edit form, and then scroll through the combo box to find it. Well, yes, Willis, we can definitely do this. It's going to involve one line of programming, and I'll show you exactly where to put it. But first, for the rest of you, if you have not yet watched this Fast Tips video, go watch it right now. Pause this video and go watch that one. A list items edit form is basically when you're working with a combo box, if you want to add another item, like let's say a shipping method, you don't have to close the order form and then go back to the shipping form and add it there and then close that and then go back. You can do it all right from inside the combo box. And that fast tips video explains how to do it. But the problem we have is if we come in here and we add someone new, let's go to the list items edit box, right? If I add something new in here, let's say ABC shipping. Okay, when I close this form, it'd be nice if that populated right in that box. Instead, you still got to drop this down, open it up, and find it in here. Okay, so what Willis wants to know is, is there a way we can just take that new value and drop it right inside the combo box? And yes, we can. With one line of code, let me show you how. First off, if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch my intro to VBA video right now. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you all the basics. Don't be scared. VBA is not scary, right? I'll walk you through it step by step. But it would be helpful if you watch this video first before continuing on. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, what basically happens is this button here loads up this form, right? Which is modal. You can't click behind it, right? We type in our new value. And then when this closes, it requeries this combo box for you, so the value shows up there, but it doesn't select it. Now we can select it with a little code. How do we do that? Well, let's go to the original form, find our shipping F over here, go to design view. Now there's a couple of events that fire when you close a form. There's on close and there's on unload, and they're very similar with a tiny bit of a difference. On unload actually runs first but before the form is actually exited, in other words, you still have access to all of the information on that form, including the fields. Whereas on close is already basically saying, okay, I just closed the form. I don't know what was on it. It's too late, but you can still do something else. Okay. But by that point, it's too late. We can't grab a value from it. So we're going to use the on unload event. Another benefit of on unload is you can cancel it if you want to. So we're going to go to on unload, hit dot, dot, dot. Now, if you watch my intro to VBA, you'll know that this window pops up, right? Our VBA window. If you get asked what kind of builder you want, pick the code builder, which I explain in the intro to VBA. Now, right here, the form unload event is going to run when you've indicated to access, hey, I want to close this form now, but you can do other stuff in here and check things and set values before it actually closes. And you can optionally cancel it if you want, which we're not going to do. But this is the perfect spot to set the value on the previous form to whatever value we have on this form, okay? Now, the other form is forms order F, and what's the field over there we wanna set? Shipping combo. And we're gonna set that equal to whatever the shipping ID is on this form. Even though the shipping ID field isn't physically on this, where'd it go, where'd you go? Oh, it's right here. Okay. Even though the shipping ID isn't on here, we can still use its value because it's in the record set underneath, which is shipping T. Okay. Okay. So when we go to close this form, 
say, hey, I want you to set the shipping combo box on order F equal to whatever the current shipping ID is. So you got to make sure you stay on that record when you close the form. Okay, let's go over here and test it. Ready? All right, drop this down. Now, go to the edit form. Here it is. Now, if you just pick something like FedEx and close this, it'll take that value and stick it in that combo box. See? There's another side effect you can do here, right? I like to close this because when you open up a modal form, it shuts the navigation pane. All right, if I open this up and I go to the shipping form, let me bring this back over here where it was. Let's see if I can grab it. Oh, no. There we go. Okay, if I pick Starfleet Courier and close this, boom, there it goes. So we can also now add an item, all right, XYZ Corp. And as long as you stay on that field, right, don't hit tab, don't go to the next one. Close this, and it pops XYZ Corp in there. See that? If you do, by mistake, type XYZ Corp and hit tab and close it, guess what? You're going to set that to null because this guy was sitting on null right here. That's a null value. Okay. So if you type someone in like, uh, you know, Rush Shipping Company and then close it, boom, there's your Rush Shipping Company. Isn't that cool? See what I mean, folks? With just one line of code, we added a whole new level of functionality to this database. Now, here's another thing for you. What happens if I want to use that same shipping edit form for a different form? Right? What if I want to add a default shipping method to my customers so that for each customer I can pick, okay, Pony Express is my default shipping method, right? And I want to be able to use the same form here to edit my list of shipping options. Well, this form is specifically calling and returning its value to the order form. So how do I get it to know which form called it and send the value back there? We'll cover that in the extended cut for the members. So members, we'll use one edit form with multiple calling forms. So whether it's your order form or your customer form, it's going to open up the same list items edit form with the shipping information and know where to return it to the calling combo box. That'll be covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases and get access to my code vault. And if you want to learn more about list items edit forms, check out my Access Beginner 8 and Access Expert 4 classes. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed.
Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.